Hi, and welcome to the Unknown Secrets of SEO Podcast. You didn't tell me we were starting off. Oh, yeah, put that, game, put that game away. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another fun-filled edition. Uh, by the way, uh, go Uruguay. Uh, it was an amazing game. Wow. Ghana. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Oh, that was ridiculous. That was so bad. Uh, my name is Chris Burris, owner of eWeb Style. And this is Paul Hansen, sales manager at eWeb Style. Thank you guys for joining us. You are listening to the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. Uh, and potentially you're actually even watching the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. Well, if you're watching, you can't see me. You just see a white <laughs> shirt and a black blob above I did it. order <laughs> I ordered lights so we're actually going to have some good lighting uh, okay. and a green screen like, I don't even look like I have legs right now yeah it's true <laughs> just a torso floating we, around we hire a handicapped here it's good you know? um, again thank you guys for listening you can find us stalk us watch us uh, follow us there are so many different ways to do that what name one uh, email info at podcast dot com I, I completely butchered that. Ignore that. <laughs> That's not even close to accurate. <laughs> Podcast at e-webstyle.com and info at e-webstyle.com. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just made that up. Yeah, it was good. Uh, you, you sold it. That's, uh, that's, that's, the, that's all it takes. You can also find us twitter.com slash e-webstyle and also facebook.com slash e-webstyle. We usually broadcast this podcast at 9.15 Central Standard Time. Uh, but it's the, soccer season, so shut up. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> it's yeah, World Cup time. Like, and there was, in fact, weather issues today. Yes. It was, it was, yes. uh, it was raining pretty hard, and I melt. Yes. So, <laughs> so I stayed home. And and there happened to be a soccer game on. Is it wrong of me to actually catch the, Brazil going home? Yeah. Brazil oh, went home. Crazy. Unbelievable. All right, so uh, we'd like to cover a little bit about lo what we talked last time. Do you remember what we talked about last time? I do not remember what happened 30 minutes ago. So, <laughs> uh, where do I beat Ghana? In, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We're, oh, the world comes on. <laughs> um, we finished talking about the top 10 mistakes that SEO mistakes that okay. you can make. So I don't remember what the last few were. Uh, go back. The last two podcasts actually covered the top mm -hmm. 10 mistakes you can make in search engine optimization. So uh, go ahead and go back and check those out. Um, a little bit of news. Do you have any news? Anything? Uh, what was that thing we talked about yesterday? Uh, oh, yeah. It was uh, – oh, yes. That was a good one. We should have printed that. I Rob, did. Rob, can you turn that off? Uh, I did. Oh. oh, Google got banned. Google's own web pages got, got banned. banned. Yes. Uh, the AdWords help pages, I read an article yesterday, and this happened yesterday. They were cloaking, so you should never cloak. They were cloaking some of the uh, text on, or no, they were showing a different page to users and the, uh, the Google, Google browser. Bot. That's cloaking, yep. And uh, Googlebot banned it. Yep. And it took a couple hours, but it, it did get fixed. So you can, that's why you, you still can get to the AdWords. So company. if you have that burning question, how bad is cloaking? Is it really that bad to be cloaking? Well, it is Google, Google. cloaked <laughs> itself and Google and banned itself. itself. So I think cloaking is probably pretty bad. In fact, I've been, I've been, I've said before that cloaking may not even be that bad as long as you're actually providing good user, user experience, user experience to the Google user. Um, you know, just throw that out. Ignore yeah. that. I'm going to change that and just say. And especially, I, I never said do it. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying that it may be even, you know, it, ignore it. Especially if you get good traffic and Googlebot is coming to your website, quit, um, repeatedly, you definitely don't want to close. Yeah, no, that's that's not good. All right, uh, you know, Apple seems to be in the news a lot right now. Uh, because of their, uh, they're in They're having product? a lot of, uh, <laughs> having a lot of uh, issues with the new phone. I hear. Yeah, apparently. So, uh, I can't even read my own handwriting on here. Oh, this is interesting. I was reading it, and it made this interesting point. Um, you know, people are talking about how bad the AT&T uh, service is, mm -hmm. right, with the iPhone. And I just read a little piece that spoke about, well, you know what? Uh, the BlackBerry on AT&T, not so many dropped calls. Other devices on AT&T, not so many dropped calls. iPhone on AT&T, dropped calls. Drop calls. So yeah. it actually is a hardware issue. And Apple came out today and said, you know, when it says four bars, it's probably closer to two. 
Oh, <laughs> so we're just lying. Since the very first iPhone, mm -hmm. the the calculation for how many fo fo uh, bars to display has been totally wrong. Oh wow. Totally wrong. Um, and it, it also read there's a, there's a class action lawsuit right now about the new G4 when you hold the phone and you got to hold it the right way. I, I, it seems too early. Couldn't they just return them? Why why would you have a class action lawsuit? Because like, just return them. A, a lawyer That's needs ridiculous. a job. <laughs> I mean, That's lawyer, ridiculous. That's yeah, ridiculous, man. <laughs> Lawyers need something to do. Got to sue somebody. In, anyway, so if that's worthy of a class action lawsuit, certainly the fact that they've been misrepresenting the number of bars that you actually have for the last three years is, you know, due for a class Definitely action lawsuit. Definitely worthy of a class action suit. You know, couple that with evidence that, you know, Blackberry don't drop as many calls as iPhones. You know, they're they're... They're going to be struggling for a little while, I think. Um, now, this is interesting. The U.S. is considering sanctions against China because China is uh, is not providing free speech opportunities on the internet. So they're they've like banned a couple products. You know, Google, all the issues they've had, and the U.S. Some people in Congress are considering sanctions against China, like boycotts and like, whatever. Don't we have something better to do? Yeah, I mean, when when did it become our policy to tell other so, countries how to run? Yeah, really. Do we agree that free speech is a good thing? Yes. Is it up to the individual countries to decide how good it is? Obviously, that's been our opinion. And, you know, we've got wars in Afghanistan to handle things like that. You know, <laughs> we don't need sanctions. <laughs> just go to war. Yeah, we just should just go, screw the sanctions. Just go to war. I, it sounds like Kenny said that. Screw the sanctions. <laughs> just go to war. Um... That's all the news. If you know, oh, that was the only thing I saw was the Google got banned yesterday on the first. We we've got to give a shout out to Scott Bonner. He's with MovePoint.com. MovePoint.com is a software, an online software for moving companies. Scott gave us a call yesterday. Uh, thank you, Scott, for listening. He listens to our podcast. Uh, he works with a number of clients uh, in San Antonio and across the country uh, that are movers, and uh, and he referred some of his clients to us. We really appreciate you, Scott. We're going to do a bang-up job for them. Don't worry. In fact, I'm meeting with them on Tuesday. Uh, so uh, thank you very much, Scott. He's also involved uh, in a business called GotBins.com. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I know in Houston they're very pretty pretty uh, uh, ubiquitous is the pods, which are little storage units that they'll drop off at your house or apartment. You fill them up, and then they'll pick them up and take them to another house or apartment or store them or whatever. Uh, so Scott's involved in GotBins, and I'm going to – a conference call with them next Wednesday uh, about search engine optimization for uh, that site and that whole business and process and everything. So uh, that's some pretty exciting stuff. And Scott, thank you very much for the referrals. Uh, we'll be taking care of all of your yes. referrals. Thanks, Scott. We appreciate it. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Activated, I think the name was, uh, one of our YouTube followers. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. I got an email from YouTube says, hey, you got a new follower. Subscriber, so. right? Like new a subscriber. subscriber. So what's up? Activated. It's so hard to I keep think track. it's activated. It's so hard to keep track. Are they a subscriber? Do a they just user? like us on yeah. YouTube? Do they whatever? Who knows? What's on the agenda for today? The agenda for today is vertical response email marketing. Which means? Uh, really, it's just uh, we always talk about calls to action, right? So we're mm -hmm. going to really focus on what we say is SIVO, search engine visitor optimization. One of our calls to action, we say, is you know get an email address, get a phone number. You, often you do this by giving away a white paper or maybe giving away a subscription to a newsletter. And so, you know, it's easy to say, oh, that's you know, we want to have a newsletter. There is value in newsletter. We have clients who put out newsletters on a regular basis, and those clients see a return on those newsletters. One in particular, we talk about from time to time, Patrick Wanis. Every time he sends out a newsletter, he gets at least one sale, okay. right? So it's not a big sale. It's not, you know, but he's still, it's it's about maintaining that relationship, that contact with your customer base uh, and opportunity. I was, uh, we were talking to a potential client uh, just yesterday. Uh, he's a realtor. And one of the things he does is he actually sends an email. Uh, he finds out, you know, a potential lead. He finds out where they live and what their price range is. And he sends them an email of properties in their area in their price range. Wow. So even though he may meet them six months before they actually are looking to buy a house, he's made a once a month contact with them, showing them properties in their area, in their price range. And so he may meet somebody and get a call six months later 
from somebody who held an open house mm -hmm. and that somebody said, oh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith came by and said that you sent them. Well, he hasn't even made any contact with them for six months. <laughs> six months ago. That's the value of a newsletter. So I think we can all understand that there is value in a newsletter. How do we get a newsletter list, also known as an email list? Yes. By the way, there's a, uh, there's a number of services out there that you can use to handle your email campaigns, your newsletter, etc. cetera. Uh, we tend to stick with three, uh, eye contact, constant contact, and a Weber. Um, but I'm sure there's a bunch of, in fact, I think there's like, uh, monkey something, monkey opt-in or gorilla opt-out, I don't know. There's some, so anyway, it was one I looked at. Chimp, chimp mail, that's what it is. Oh, chimp mail. MailChimp. MailChimp, there we go. So, uh, so check those out, use those. Those have some advantages depending on who you're hosting with uh, because they are, are well known by AOL, Hotmail, Gmail uh, that as, as being reputable email, mass emailers. So you're more likely to get your emails through the spam systems mm -hmm. of Hotmail, AOL, Gmail, uh, which are pretty sophisticated and, and cutthroat systems these days uh, if you use those services. So don't try and just send it from your own server um, You know, if you're sending out 10,000 emails or even, even 1,000 or even 100 because you want to make sure they arrive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's really important. All right, so how do you collect email addresses? And this is 29 ways, and I got this from a website, uh, typepad, T-Y-P-E-P-A-D dot com. So go check them out. They've got other very interesting things. This one is 29 ways to collect email addresses for your business. What do you think the number one way to collect an email address for your business is? Uh, I don't know, steal them? Yeah, like let's just pull yeah, them off works. of uh, your email, your personal email list, you know, yeah. that people say. As long as it's your personal email <laughs> list and not some moron who sent you 500 emails because they CC'd you. Yeah, well, that's what, yeah, you know, when you get CC'd and you have like yeah. 18 other that's four in there, you just take those emails, yeah. add them to your email list. Like, Don't listen not. to him, please. Yeah. <laughs> Our email is not at podcast.com, <laughs> and don't listen to him because that would generate spam. That's illegal. Yeah. No, um, the number one, the, the, what they put here is put an offer on the back of your business card to get people to sign up for your newsletter. So okay. you know, hey, sign up for my newsletter here. You're supposed to be handing out your business cards on a regular business cards on yeah. a regular basis. Um, another way, trade shows. Okay. If you do any trade shows and you are not collecting emails, yeah, you should. You should. You should have it on your website, duh. Yep. Sign up for our newsletter here. Yep. Or give me your email address. One of the things that I do, um, so I do some improv at Third Coast Comedy, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes the owners aren't as proactive as I am about, you know, getting getting emails or whatever. They are. You familiar, you're familiar with Groupon, in fact. Yeah. I think, yeah. Oh, so I, I get my Groupon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, but I'm bum. <laughs> Is that what's up? <laughs> that's, that's what's up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Third Coast Comedy had a coupon on Groupon, and so they had a whole bunch of people who had Groupon accounts. And so when they came in, they had their printout and said, "Here's my Groupon coupon. I'm mm -hmm. here to, you know, I've already paid for my show." And I would say, "Hey." All you need to do is fill out your email address information here, and mm -hmm. you're welcome to go in. So it, you know, they kind of, anytime you're walking in place, you kind of feel like you have to give something. So we got email addresses. Yeah. So when you have people, even if they're coming in for free, you know, make free actually the cost being the mm -hmm. email address. So make sure, you know, and and this just talks about having a clipboard where people can sign up um, at your at your trade show. And you mentioned this one. Uh, what well, kind of? So, of course, you should have a way to sign up for your newsletter on your website, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a call to action. That would fall under what we call SIBO, mm -hmm. Search Engine Visitor Optimization. And uh, you, want, you want to glance at that? And uh, so you need to have that on your website. Make sure you're also enticing or encouraging people to sign up for your newsletter in your emails. So, like, when you send an email, you've got an address block at the bottom, okay. right? So make sure that they're saying, hey, you know, subscribe to our free email. Uh, maybe even give another discount associated with that, whatever it may be. Um, that's that's another way to get emails. There you go. Uh, I don't even know where we are. Um, uh, we're I'm not looking. that far. We're on, <laughs> we're on three. So send in an opt-in email to your address book asking them to join your list. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I never actually even thought about that. Yep. I've, I've, I've never experienced that, but that's actually a very creative idea. Just ask people, hey, hey would you like to join my email list? There's a free white paper in it for you about... X, Y, and Z. So if you're in an office, you know, 
maybe, and depending on what you're selling, of course, because you know if you're selling, uh, I don't know, nuclear waste. Don't ask me where that came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in general, probably the people who are on the mailing list of your secretary or or your operations guy really aren't interested in your newsletter. Um, other than that, you know, any other business, you, uh, you know, talk to your employees, talk to the people in your office, and say, hey, send out to you know, try and see if you can get everybody on your list to sign up for a newsletter. Maybe some do, maybe some don't. The the opportunity that each email address presents is they can just forward it. Mm -hmm. So then your newsletter becomes more effective. It's interesting in publishing, like when you're looking to put an ad in a newspaper or in a magazine, they often talk about. I think I don't. There's a. I'm sure there's an advertising term for it. Secondary reads. So somebody buys the New York Times and then they leave it in the bathroom, and then the next three oh, guys it read in. it again. And so what? How many ads? It's not that your ad saw one person. It actually saw three. One person and three guys in the toilet. <laughs> Three guys on the toilet. All right. <laughs> they also do moving. <laughs> All right, next it says you can join a local chamber of commerce. Uh, email the member list about your services with a link to sign up for your newsletter. Very cool. You know, out and about. You should always, when you're out and about passing out cards, collect cards. You can get them that way. That's true. One of the things that I, I usually use my business card not as a way to hope that somebody else will get in contact with me. I use it for reciprocity so that as I'm giving my business card, they will give I me feel, theirs. I feel they, like I have to give you a business card now. Exactly, so now I've got their business card. I really don't care typically what they'll do with my, I mean, if they happen to call me, great. I, I just typically don't care what they do with my business card because I don't leave our success in somebody else's mm -hmm. hands. Now the business card's in my hand and it's in my, you know, my our success is in my hands and that's, a much better way to go. So make sure you're being proactive about collecting uh, collecting the emails and information. Uh, next up, host your own event, uh, an art gallery, a, a software company. Oh wait, I'm reading something that's completely wrong. But basically, just no, that's right. No. Yeah, yep. it says art gallery, software companies, retail shops, consultants can all host an event and request attendees to sign up for something. I mean, uh, you could. You know. Give away, give a, give away uh, a, a, a faux iPod Shuffle. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, I was They're just thinking, like twenty bucks. I was thinking at your wedding. You know, when people sign up, ask, steal their email address <laughs> out of the guest book. <laughs> Is that on here? <laughs> Weddings and no, bar I just, went to, I just went to a wedding and I was like, I was signing up for it. And I, they asked for the email address and I thought I was like. I was like, one, I've never seen this before on a wedding guest book. Yeah. Well, you're not an email address, but hey, I gave it to him. And if he spams me, oh, that's going to be his ass. So that could be like, in case there's another wedding somewhere oh, yeah. <laughs> down the road, they know how to get a hold of you. Or or if there's children, you know, yeah, things work out, go. and there are children, they can send the announcement to the email. Um, we've thought, we've been thinking about having a, an event here actually since we moved in. We just haven't gotten around to it and something that we certainly should do. Uh, it does also mention Lunch and Learns, which is a great mm -hmm. way one, to kind of promote your business uh, and two, why it's an event where you can actually collect email addresses. So um, think about you know grouping together with somebody and doing uh, Lunch and, lunch and Learns. Some, some kind of similar business or related business so you guys can both ex mm -hmm. you know share the cost of a hotel room, not room, but a hotel. Uh, now it's uh, a party. Yeah. <laughs> and a cake. Hotel. <laughs> and don't forget the donkeys. <laughs> uh, offer a birthday club where you give something special to people who sign up. I That's give you, cool. Give me your, uh, you get a free cookie on your birthday or whatever, like at Subway or something like that. Yep. Or? Yeah, I made that a good example, there's another improv group in town called Comedy Sports, and the month of your birthday, you get a free ticket. Oh, that's so cool. They, they, the way they market it humorously by saying, just for being born, you get a free ticket. Two drink minimum. Two drink minimum. <laughs> actually, they're, they, they actually don't have Oh, I don't minimum. know. I, I mean, that's, comedy clubs always most have Most comedy them. clubs do. <laughs> right. Here's a free ticket, but you owe us 25 bucks for drinks. Now, here's taking, so I gave the idea of everyone in your office and getting them to send out an email and, and try and collect emails. Let's take it to the next level. Let's incentivize the employees and give them money for valid email addresses. Wow. Yeah. Like, how much? <laughs> you mean here? Because <laughs> <laughs> you need some email. I can get you some email addresses. Email, right? that's I can get you that. And yeah. please find valid. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I can make a whole lot of valid email addresses. P H H P. 
um, giving something free like a PDF. Whoa, have we ever mentioned that before? Oh man, I do that all the time. I sign up for stuff constantly and typically even remove my email address off of it. But hey, they at least get it for a second. I do it all the time. And you know, I'd probably say maybe 10% of them I stay on the email list. I'm probably get. 10, 15 newsletters. So it's similar to uh, you know what we've what what you'll call link baiting. So you put out good information that people would be interested in. In fact, we're we're planning on doing that here uh, for each of our podcasts. We're going to start saying like a tip of the podcast. Uh, we're not prepared today, so you won't yeah. get a tip <laughs> other than everything we're saying. Um, but so the tip of the podcast, you know, at, at some point we can say you know top 10 SEO tips from the Unknown Secrets of SEO podcast. That's something people might be interested in. Uh, it might even give us an email for, so then they, we would have their email address, and or um, you know might give us an email address just so they can download the the uh, the, the white paper. Mm -hmm. Or we could just put it on our website, and it could be link bait, where people are like, "Hey, that's a good article, good tips, you know, from the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. Yeah. Let me link to it, and, and that would add value to us, also." So that's not only email; that's also link baiting. So that's pretty good. Uh, referrals. Now, this is always a big sales thing. Hey, you just closed a client. Uh, you're doing a bang up job for you. You know, every time you visit them, they're saying, "Wow, you guys are doing an amazing job. Thank you very much." And you say, "If you're if you're that enthused, certainly you know somebody who would also va benefit from our service." Yeah, I've seen it tons of places. If if we did a job, don't tell us, tell a friend. Yep, that's good. Just one, and yeah. they'll tell two friends, yeah. and they'll tell two friends, and, and which so is what on. We hope. There was a commercial that did that, and I, I it was an older commercial and. I keep referencing yeah. it, and everyone just looks at me like, kind of like I am now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah same look. <laughs> Two friends, I get it. It's exponential. Okay, we're there. Um, bounce backs, get them. Send a postcard, and so this isn't really about getting emails. It's like, hey, maybe somebody gave you, you know, they fat fingered part okay. of their email address, and you get a bounce back. Don't just throw it away and say, okay, it's just a bad email. Uh, hopefully, you got a phone number, or hopefully, you got an address, or can hunt them down. And not kill them, but actually mm -hmm. get their real email address. So, uh, so that's a way. So, and this one just says send a postcard. So have a postcard for bounce backs. Maybe they change their email because you're signing up for a lot of lists. At some point, your email address, you know, we may have to change it mm -hmm. just because you're inundated with so much crap. Uh, we've had to do that for other people in the office. Maybe they're visiting the wrong sites. <laughs> <laughs> Q, Q, clue number one, uh, trade newsletter space with neighboring businesses. That's a good idea. So we've got a printer company next door. Uh, if they're doing a newsletter, which I don't think they are, yeah. if they were doing a newsletter, we could say, hey, why don't we put a small little square on your newsletter uh, that makes it easy for people to find us and sign up for our newsletter, and we can do the same for you. Because a lot of people who are doing web and then business cards and whatever need printers, so that would be good for them, good for both. That's that's actually a really, I've never even thought about that. That's a really cool idea. Like, hey, we had a new neighbor move in. They do this. That's very cool. And they do the same. You know, there's off there's a there's a thing called, um, and the name has totally escaped me. It's called joint ventures, mm -hmm. uh, where somebody you know again like Patrick Wanis, he sells self help products, and he can work with another company that sells self help help products. A name that you guys would remember is like Tony Robbins. Okay. So he contacts you know the business department of uh, Patrick contacts the business department of Tony Robbins says, hey, we'd like to send you out. We'd like you to send out these three emails to your list. So we don't want your list. Obviously, mm -hmm. they're not going to give you the list. And then Tony Robbins says the same thing. Okay, we'll send those three out if you send these three out for us and you're marketing a particular product to the cross list. And then some will have rules where you can't send them to a page where they're required to give their email. Mm -hmm. And others will say that's fine. So then you're kind of scooping out of their list some more emails for your list. And it's a, it's a really good way um, to do that called joint ventures. Um, if you're interested in joint ventures, give us a call. We can help you coordinate some of those things. Uh, giveaways. Give Ask, something away. Yeah, for your email. give something away. But you know, and it, you, you, your first thought is okay, giving something physical. It's email. But remember, you can give a twenty dollar gift card or whatever just through email. You can give a Borders twenty dollar card through okay. uh, through email. So 
Um, you know, give stuff away. Hey, I mean, if you have some twenty dollar gift cards, I'll definitely give you my email. Send them to us for real. Yeah, I, I'll give you all. I'll give you a bunch of email addresses. He, could, he can get. I'll give you other people's email. He can give you a lot of valid emails. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you Chris's email. I'll give you Javier's email. Hey, I'll take that twenty dollar. The gift list card. goes on and on, and then two friends, and then there'll be two, two friends. And <laughs> all right, do you have a postal list without emails? Right. Some people have a list, you know, you've been in business for quite a while and you were doing business prior to really the internet, you know, really grabbing hold. And you've got this list of physical emails. Send, send out to uh, a, a postcard to those physical emails and, and collect. And collect lists. email addresses? Yes. There you go. Get, get with the times, people. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, hello. But frankly, anyone who's listening to this can, you know, just scratch that because we know it's not you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what do we got? Include opt-in forms on every page of your site. An opt-in form, what do we also call that something else? Uh, it begins with an A. What is it? A C call? Call? Uh, um, call to action. Oh, because I was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with a C, fool. Call, yeah, I know. <laughs> I went A. Or, I threw them off. You see how, how good that worked? <laughs> Um, yeah, have an opt-in form. Again, this is an opt-in to your newsletter. It can be an opt-in to uh, to a white paper, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it may be. Pop-up windows. When someone attempts to leave your site, pop-up. Who wrote this crap? I, I don't know. I don't know. Pop-up windows? I do not. So like far, that's the that. only one that I, that I, can, I would disagree with. I really with. don't like when the people ask, like, oh, you sure you want to leave? Like, yeah, I hit the X yeah. In the upper right hand corner. If the button were called bounce, I hit the bounce button. Yeah. Thank you. I, I was I was trying to go to back for a reason. It wasn't an accident. Punk. So now you've got a newsletter, your list is growing. Make sure you include a forward to a friend link on your web pages oh. and also in your newsletter. Sometimes people get newsletters and they may think about sharing them. They may think a friend could use it. And if you don't, actually just tell them, hey, forward this newsletter to a friend mm -hmm. who might find it of value. If you don't tell them that, you know, you know, frankly, users are often a little bit slow, sometimes a little bit dumb, and you want to walk them through the process. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, let's say that's a little harsh. They're just busy, right? And so they're, it's not in their mind, hey, everything I get, I got to think, who could I send it mm -hmm. to and, and help out? Uh, so just refresh them and refresh their memories and say, yeah, yeah forward it to a friend. I, I get articles all the time. Buddy's sending me stuff out of the newspaper all the time, and I, just, I, I could probably tell you every major newspaper in the country has a share link for every single article where you can share that with someone else. Awesome idea. Um, and that's p typically part of almost every content management solution now. Okay. So Joomla, uh, ModX, we don't use. WordPress. Uh, WordPress, you know, that's part of almost every one of them. Uh, offer a community. Use Ning as your easy to set up community and have, so have you heard of Ning? Yes. N-I-N-G. Uh, so you can create your own social network. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So you can create your own social network around SEO. I don't know the value. Oh, I'm going to have to spend some time yeah. with that. <laughs> I, sometimes we just don't have enough time for all this technology stuff. Jeez. Um, offer email only discounts and don't use those offers anywhere but email. So if, you, if you're making it clear, hey, you've got to be part of this list and the only place you can get it is here and you got to have this code, then they're more likely to give you their email. Yeah. So that's a good one. Uh, telemarketing while you're on the phone, get the email. It, it, this is always a good one. There's nothing like a fishbowl. Like <laughs> you're thinking technology. I mean a fishbowl. No, I'm thinking in, like a like a like, restaurant. Oh, oh, okay. Because I'm like I'm thinking a fishbowl with fish in it. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't exactly. understand how that how that plays into collecting. Uh, well, <laughs> well, you take that and a luger, and then you've got a real entertaining thing. That they have to yeah, get their now card. we're not saying steal uh, business cards out of a fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> we are not saying that you should steal business cards. Because I know that happens. Fishbowl. I've never done that, but I know it happened. Oh, when you were at your previous job, people. I would write info down off of. Oh, uh, you can <laughs> scribble the ones you can see. Yeah, I'd, I'd write the info. I wouldn't just take it. And then the the owner comes up. What are you doing? Aren't I supposed to guess the number of cards in yeah. there? I'm just estimating. <laughs> I win a prize, right? <laughs> Um, and include an opt-in form inside your emails for those people who get your email forwarded to them. Somehow I think that we've covered that already. Mm -hmm. uh, it says number 25 is trade shows. Uh, okay. I think we covered yeah, that I think already. That, so this one I, I, it is uh, um, use your social media. You were looking over my shoulder, weren't you? 
Next three, next oh, three, that's the next one. Next four things. <laughs> use Facebook. Use Facebook. Use Facebook. Use Twitter. Um, so, you know, have a Facebook page like we do. Uh, Facebook.com slash eWebStyle. People can go there. They can give you the thumbs they up. Can, they can like they can like you. Uh, and then and you can harvest their email address without mm-hmm. them knowing it. Yes. And then, <laughs> yeah. Or just get an iPad. Apparently, you can harvest emails out of those. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Or just get a Google. Uh, the maps mobile and you can steal yeah, everyone's can information around town, yeah, drive around town get steal paid everyone's by information. google and steal all sorts you're gonna of have to go back to about five or six podcasts earlier we talked about that go google <laughs> uh in facebook post the hosted link from your newsletter so often when you do a newsletter you should have a you should post it on your website make sure that it's properly linked so you can get to it a blog is a great mm-hmm. place as an example so on your facebook you should be linking to that like just like every time we post a new podcast Boom, we, we put a link almost every time. Mm-hmm. Some of the times. <laughs> when we post <laughs> I know Darren's like, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Include an opt in form on your Facebook page. There you go. Opt in our newsletter. Any, any place you've got information out on the web. And finally, we've got use Twitter. Uh, Twitter, the hosted link of your email campaign every time you launch. And that was similar to do that. We are pretty good about that. We tend to tweet right before we do a video cast. We tend to tweet right after we do a video cast. Uh, we tend to uh, tweet and Facebook actually kind of both the same uh, when a podcast actually goes live on iTunes. And just so you guys know out there, we tend to get a new Twitter follower almost every time we tweet. So there are people out there, for whatever industry you're in, there are probably people out there who are searching for, you know, in Twitter, you can search for a particular term. Mm-hmm. There's, so there's probably people out there who uh, sporadically search for SEO, and if they do it about the same time we tweet about our SEO podcast, they find out about our SEO podcast, and then they start to follow us on Twitter, which usually means they're also uh, starting to subscribe to our podcast and or video cast. So do that for your own industry. People are, you know, wondering what's the value. There's a great, I mean, there's a nice, easy way for me to say, you know, one of the values we get out of Twitter is when I tweet, I get a new follower, mm-hmm. and you know, I can be reasonably confident that they're following. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and give or take. Give or, yeah. <laughs> plus or minus. And uh, well, there's some people like when they start following you, and they they're following like thirty thousand people, oh, yeah. and you know, they have twenty thousand followers. You know, those people just, they're not, you know, there's probably a robot of some kind yeah. that found SEO or whatever. That's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't reciprocate. Um, but, you know, our list, our Twitter list is growing uh, every time we tweet. So mm-hmm. make sure you tweet about and include keywords okay. related to things that you would like people to find you about. So that is the end of podcast number 65, Vertical Response Email Market. You thought it was going to be boring, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I just said yeah I wasn't actually listening to I mean I knew it, I knew what you were saying it's like yeah, yeah, yeah just, I knew just it was going to be boring yeah it was just the first thing that came out of my mind and after I said it I was like ooh no that's ooh, not yeah. the right thing to say well you know so how to collect email addresses very important you know it's a way to get new sales leads way to bring new people in interest new people to your business that probably didn't know about you before Remember, you are listening to the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. That is because of you. Uh, you know what? We didn't get a review on iTunes this week. We're, we're averaging oh, about one a week. So uh, we implore you, go create an iTunes account uh, and submit a review, only if it's good, about us on iTunes. We really appreciate that. Make sure, uh, I don't think you can actually include like content information, content like URLs or whatever in the review. But fire off an email and say, hey, I just registered as a Mr. Reviewer yeah. uh, and Mr. SEO Reviewer, and uh, and here's my link, and we'll give you some link love, just like we gave some link love to Scott Bonner. Again, thanks, Scott. We'll be in contact next week. Um, this is the end of podcast number 65. Uh, until the next podcast. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> until the next podcast. My name's Chris Burris. And this is Paul Hansen. Bye-bye for now.